owning a franchise of a large restaurant chain seems to be synonymous with guaranteed success. If this chain is globally renowned with nationwide coverage, even better, and no name is a greater reference in the industry than McDonald's, known for generations and loved by adults and children alike. That's why images like these are not uncommon. This is definitely a good deal for McDonald's. But is it really a good deal for the franchisee? The initial investment to join the ranks of the Golden Arches is $1 million to $2.3 million, but the brand brings comfort and security to the investor. After all, McDonald's seems stronger than ever, with its stocks currently at their highest valuation in the company's history, steadily growing. However, what might seem like a secure investment on paper reveals a different reality in day-to-day -day operations. Behind the scenes of the fast food empire, a climate of strained relationships has led to a kind of exodus of franchisees in recent years. Many who invested significant time and money in an attempt to profit from the clown's franchise found themselves immersed in enormous financial pressures, high operational costs, and the imposition of suffocating sales targets. If the golden arches of McDonald's have been synonymous with success and prosperity for decades, why are so many franchisees abandoning this partnership? And if opening a McDonald's franchise may not be a good business, what explains the company's unwavering growth in recent years? To enter this club, one must be willing, as being a McDonald's partner is definitely not an easy path. The brand is highly selective when it comes to approving new franchisees. The first restriction comes in the location. In many countries, the chain does not allow the opening of restaurants in cities with fewer than 100,000 inhabitants. With this in mind, the aspiring franchisee needs to demonstrate interest in the franchise by contacting the company directly. To do this, the first step is to send a resume, demonstrating management skills, and also answer a questionnaire. All prerequisites to secure an interview with a representative. This interview is followed by a financial analysis of the candidate. If approved through these stages, the potential franchisee still has to personally observe the operation of McDonald's restaurants and undergo a final profile analysis. Surviving all these steps, the franchisee enters the training phase, with a nine-month immersion to learn everything possible about managing a McDonald's restaurant. This stringent selection process comes with an extra layer of exclusivity. The initial investment to open a McDonald's franchise ranges from $1 million to $2.3 million, an amount that may discourage many aspiring franchisees. In countries like the United States, the candidate needs to have at least half a million dollars available in liquid assets and pay a $45,000 membership fee. Additionally, once the franchise proposal is accepted, McDonald's actively participates in every decision of the franchise, including choosing the exact location of the new restaurant, preparing the new venture, and developing marketing strategies. Once the new franchise is open, the franchisee begins to pay monthly fees, such as the royalty fee, which is 4% of the monthly unit revenue, and the advertising fee, which also costs 4% or more. They also have to bear expenses related to the brand's strategies, costs for renovations and equipment. One of the many obligations for someone becoming a franchisee is to have a highly involved management of the unit, taking on more of a gourmandized manager role than an owner per se, with periodic supervisions, franchisees often receive frequent visits and inspections at the restaurants, all to ensure that the brand's expectations and requirements are consistently met and that every Big Mac is the same, even if it never quite matches the advertising. Despite all these impositions, 93% of the 38,000 McDonald's worldwide are operated by franchisees. According to Joe Erlinger, president of McDonald's USA, franchisees are the main ingredient in the success of the brand. However, the life of a franchisee is not solely about impositions and bureaucracies. A positive aspect is that they have direct access to various marketing and management strategies, the brand's experience and know-how, and the right to consult with experts from various areas of the company. All this to ensure the maximum performance of McDonald's restaurants. And of course, the most important point of all is being able to use the McDonald's brand. 
already recognized and beloved by the public. But for many franchisees, the fast food chain has adopted increasingly abusive practices. Recently, McDonald's implemented a complete makeover of the brand's visuals and mandated restaurant renovations to align with the new visual identity, including the adoption of new machines like self-service kiosks. One of the main problems with such requirements is that the network basically does not provide financial support for these changes, which end up being quite costly for the franchisee. But considering that the McDonald's franchise is still considered one of the most reliable to invest in, is it really possible to make a profit as a franchisee of the Golden Arches? McDonald's is present on every continent in the world, except Antarctica, of course. As one of the largest fast food chains, with so many units scattered around the world, it is expected that the revenue of a McDonald's franchise involves millions of dollars. And that's exactly the case. According to Business Insider, in 2019, the average annual revenue of a McDonald's unit in the United States is around $2.7 million. But anyone who thinks that this means the franchisee's profit is proportional to this amount is mistaken. In reality, it is estimated that this number corresponds to only 6% of the annual revenue. In other words, a McDonald's franchisee will have a profit of about $150,000 per year. To be honest, this number is not very impressive, especially considering the initial million-dollar investment and the weight of the McDonald's brand. Moreover, this amount is not much different from the salaries of graduated professionals in the United States. For comparison, a survey by the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2022 found that a dentist earned an average of $180,000 per year, and a lawyer $160,000. Even though a degree is very expensive, it doesn't come close to the initial investment value of opening a McDonald's franchise. This happens because the restaurant's revenue takes serious hits from an extensive list of operational costs, royalties, fees, and taxes, which end up falling on the franchisee's shoulders. Moreover, over 10% of the revenue is allocated to rent payments, often to McDonald's itself. In a model where everyone wins, McDonald's emerges as the big winner. The brand thrives on franchises, and that's where the lion's share of the profit truly comes from. That's precisely why it's in McDonald's interest to attract as many franchisees as possible. While franchisees are busy with restaurant operations, the company rakes in billions of dollars in profits. From 2018 to 2020, the company's average annual profit was $2.4 billion, with the majority of the revenue coming from franchised restaurants. This is the key point. McDonald's doesn't make money by selling hamburgers, but by exploiting its franchise system. Harry Joseph Sonneborn, the right-hand man of Ray Kroc during the first decade of McDonald's as a franchise, once said, and I quote, Technically, we're not in the food business. We're in the real estate business. The only reason we sell 15-cent hamburgers is that they are the greatest source of revenue with which our tenants can pay us the rent. This business strategy or model was Sonneborn's invention. In the early 60s, when Ray Kroc bought the company from the true founders, the McDonald brothers, Harry Sonneborn had an idea to maximize the company's profits, buy the land where franchisees could operate. Still used by McDonald's today, this strategy makes the company not only the franchiser but also the tenant of the lots where restaurants are opened, and the tenants are the franchisees themselves. This works well for the brand since acting as a real estate service for franchises is much more profitable than operating its own restaurants. The company manages to retain over 80% of the revenue from franchisees. While in units operated by the giant itself, this percentage is only around 15%. While McDonald's simply observes and waits for the money to roll in, many franchisees are not very satisfied with this kind of unilateral partnership. The question is, are franchisees playing the role of the true clown in the midst of this story? In recent years, the relationship between franchisees and the company has not been the same. After so much time and money invested to have the right to operate a McDonald's unit, the frustration of franchisees in the face of the brand's apparent disregard for its partners was inevitable. Many of these individuals dreamed of entrepreneurship, 
but didn't realize that having a franchise like this was far from being a true entrepreneur. It was like paying to be an employee of a large fast food chain. The only apparent freedom given to managers is choosing which of the two uniforms they could wear. In 2018, for example, the brand demanded a complete redesign of the interior of the restaurants, including the installation of new self-service kiosks as part of a rebranding effort. It's no secret that renovations are costly, so imagine the reaction of franchisees when they learned that they would need to replace all the furniture and the interior of their units. McDonald's offered to cover 55% of the renovation costs, it's true. But even so, restaurant owners remained not very happy with it. In the United States, this led to the establishment of the first franchisee association for the brand, the National Owners Association, or NOAA, in an attempt to empower franchisees in the face of company decisions. At the end of 2020, when McDonald's decided to impose a new fee on its already burdened franchisees, the association took action and franchisees decided to take legal action against the network. Dissatisfaction with McDonald's franchise system has also led to another effect, franchisees opting out. In a franchisee satisfaction survey regarding the partnership, McDonald's received an average score of 1.19 on a scale of 1 to 5, a dismal result. The consequence is that many franchisees are simply selling their outlets in record numbers. In 2021, over 1,700 restaurants in the United States were sold, accounting for about 13% of the stores there. Burger King, one of its major competitors, had a franchise sale percentage of only 6%. In the two previous years, over 1,400 McDonald's stores had also changed ownership, adding to the closure of 450 stores, resulting in nearly 30% of stores being sold or closed in just three years. Even though satisfied with what he earned during his lifetime, Michael Anton sold his franchise after 32 years. In an interview, he mentioned, I wasn't entirely comfortable with the company's direction, and I was burned out and didn't like what was happening. It was a completely different business than it had been. According to some franchisees, reasons for this include changes in McDonald's business itself, arbitrary decisions and fees imposed, and some unpopular policies among franchisees, such as the adoption of surprise inspections in stores. Additionally, arguments suggest that the profitability of McDonald's franchises might not be the best option in the market today, as real profits for a franchisee are low in relation to the initial investment proportion. Estimates indicate that it may take six to nine years for the franchisee to recoup the initial investment. At this point, it's important to remember that managing a franchise of the brand requires constant effort from the franchisee. In other words, it may take up to nine years of hard work, following company orders, just to recover the initially spent million dollar amount. Therefore, any aspiring franchisee needs to carefully analyze the numbers and possibilities. After all, with the initial investment amount, is it not possible to seek an equally profitable investment without the need to work or swallow a company's orders in the process? Finally, if the foundation of McDonald's business model is precisely the franchise model, and the relationship between the company and franchisees is strained, why does McDonald's still perform so well in the financial market? The answer is simple. The gigantic profits achieved by the brand even at the expense of franchisees make McDonald's stocks a highly attractive option. After all, who wouldn't want to invest in a company that consistently generates billion-dollar profits? So, for investors, McDonald's can be an extremely lucrative opportunity. The question is, can the same be said for franchisees? Now, for those watching this video, let's discuss a better business alternative. Do you know which business model offers high profit margins, immense scalability, and requires low initial investment? The startup market specializing in software development is the optimal choice to bring together all these advantages. However, the only place where you will truly find a highly scalable service that demands low investment is with Rotomap. Rotomap has global experience providing consulting and developing apps for startups in the United States, Europe and Latin America, making it by far the best option for new entrepreneurs. 
If you want to venture into the premier market, contact Roadmap right away through the website www.roadmap.co slash home or via email at contact at roadmap.co. What do you think about this McDonald's franchise business? Do you think it's worth the investment? Leave a comment below telling your opinion. Also consider leave a like and subscribe for more videos. That's it for this video, a big hug and see you next time.